Hello, everybody. What's going on? Oh, I'm getting notifications galore that the Dice Tower is live. Computer, telephones lining up. Um, how's everybody doing? Uh, let me know if you can hear me, please. And if you can see me. If you can't see me, you probably can't tell me that you can't hear me either. Just, you know, give me a 5x5 five five here and I will get, we'll, I'll get going real soon here. Uh, okay, I'm switching over to the chat. Uh, sound is off for me. Good. All right. And I can switch over here and here. And that's it. All right. Thank you for letting me know you can see me and hear me. All right, everybody. Uh, welcome to another solitaire gameplay. I, uh, I just get so lonely here at work that sometimes I need to uh, play a solitaire game. But, you know, have you all uh, join me because playing um, the game Solitaire and not having anyone watching is, it's not sad and lonely enough. So, uh, thanks for joining me. We're going to be taking a look today at Nautilian, Nautilian right over here, which is the latest game in the Honorverse series. There have been, what, five so far? So, we've got Onirim or Onirim. That's the first one. It's my favorite. It's the one I've played by far the most. I've played that more than every other game combined. If you want to go see that game play, being played live, then wait till I'm done here. Don't go yet. And then go see that one, which was the first uh, solitaire play I did a few weeks ago. Uh, then after that, we had Urbion, the one that was that has not been reprinted in this nice big box. Um, then after that, we had uh, uh, Sylveon, Castellion, and now Nautilion which has an underwater theme, still in this sort of dream world. And the premise here is that I am in the Nautilian, a little submarine here, and I'm going to be traveling to the Dark Tower, I think the Dark dark House, Dark Tower something else. Um, don't sue me, Stephen King. Uh, the Dark House, while the, the bad ship here, called the, uh, the Phantom, is going to be traveling towards the Happy Isles right at the beginning here and attempting to get there before I get to the dark house and if that happens then I lose the game if um, my objective is to fill my sub with crew which is this right here if I can put all the crew I need on there and make it to the dark house before they arrive where I came from then I win the game so that's the very basics of it. I'm going to show you how the game works. And I'm, I already threw in a little expansion because I find the base game to be really, really vanilla. It's, uh, it's a little on the simplistic side. So I already have one expansion here. The mages, I'm going to talk about them in just one second. Let me show you how the game works. Once we've played here one time, then I'll probably uh, maybe do a little Q&A with you while I uh, reset this. And I'll probably end up playing again with a different uh, variant different expansion that's most likely what's going to happen the game is pretty short so there should be enough time for us to play uh twice all right so let me make sure uh comments here are good hello everybody welcome uh you have my twitter handle there on the screen if you want to follow me on there or send me a question or something feel free to do that as well all right and so let me get to it the uh way the game works is each round i am going to be uh come on cable Every round I am going to, the first thing I do is I'm going to roll these three dice. All right, I'm going to roll the dice, and then I'm going to assign these three dice to three different things. I'm going to assign one to the dark house itself, any one of the three. Then I am going to assign one to the phantom, and then I'm going to assign one to the Nautilian, my own ship. And then they'll trigger in that order. The very first thing is the dark house here. If I gave it a three or a four, I lose one of these tokens, which are helpful for me if I don't have any of these or if I want to I can also lose one crew token on the sub second thing is the the uh, phantom is going to move as many spaces as, as the uh, pips on the die so one two three four on this track and it'll eliminate the token it lands on and then I myself move one two three I'll take that token and I'll either add it to the crew if I'm able to or I'll give it to myself flipped over on the other side of these is a token just like these and I'll have more of these reserves in order to take uh, cool little actions and such. All right. 
So that's basically it. And so in this case, this is fine. This moves four, eliminates that. This moves three, and I get this token. Uh, as you can see, maybe you can see, but some of these have letters on them instead of numbers. That's what the mages are. In order to win this variant of the game, I also need the three mages. I need an A, a B, and a C. They must be there for me to win. But besides that, if I'm ever able to get a combination here with the letter and the number next to it, which is A1, B, and a 4, C, and a 7, then I get a reroll for each one of those that I have there. So it'll give me a little more leeway as to how I can manipulate these dice. Besides that, I also have this card here, which gives me a couple of special powers. And I can spend the tokens here in my reserve to trigger these powers. A single token spent lets me re-roll all three dice before I assign them. Two tokens are going to let me change a die to whatever I want. And then two tokens as well lets me switch the positions of two of the, of the tokens around the spiral board here. Uh, they can come from anywhere. They do not have to be adjacent. And it'll let me sort of manipulate what I need to accomplish there. So it's basically it. Hopefully that brings everyone uh, up to speed on how the game works. We are going to get started. No questions yet. Everybody's with me so far. Yeah, good, good. Let's do it. All right. So here we go. And by the way, I will very likely lose this game. It is pretty challenging, and I am not good at it. So hee hee. Here we go. Uh, first round, you go back to where you came from. All right, I'm going to roll those. I am going to assign a two here. Three to the phantom, one to myself. The two here is fine. Three here goes to the six, and it eliminates it. I put them aside so I can see what's gone. And then I move one, which is the A. I'll take the A and put it over here in that spot. I now have that. And that's it. I take the dice. I roll them again. A one, one, and a three, huh? Hmm. Okay. I'll do one, one, three for myself. The one over here is nothing. The one over here eats this number five. And then I move one, two, three, and I take a C token and put it down here. There is one more thing, by the way, here on the Nautilian. The way you're allowed to play crew, it has a, there's a specific way in which you're allowed to do it. I'll talk about that as soon as I actually take one. All right, next up. I hope I'm rolling on screen here. Yes, I am. Uh, this is bad. That's that's not great because I rolled a three and a four and a one. I would see sometimes I debate do I want the one because I want to make sure I'm not leaving so much behind, but then I give a higher die to the other ship to the Phantom, which means it's zooming towards me. I'm gonna spend one of these and I'm gonna re-roll these three dice. I'm not I'm not real happy with that. Uh, that is somehow worse. But I'm okay with that. I'm going to give this one the four. I'm going to put the, yeah, I'm going to put the four over here. And I'm going to put the two over here. So first this one happens. It's a four. That's not good. I have to lose one of these. All right. Then this one moves four, one, two, three, four, and it eliminates a B. So I'll put that down here. And then I move two spaces and I take a one. Now, here's the way this works. With the one, I can either put it right here. I already have an A. An A1 there would let me uh, re-roll one time. And by the way, I should probably... Uh, let me know in the comments, actually, and I'll decide what to do. If you want me to turn off this and just show you a camera view, I can just have that fade away. Or if you want me to leave this part on, okay? You get a little more board view if I click it off. But, um, I don't know, maybe you want to watch me rolling or something. All right, so let me know in the comments there what you would like. All right, so I move twice. Um, so the one, if I put it up here, I get a reroll. That's great. As you can see, I'm uh, already messing up. If I take it and I put it on the ship, on the Nautilian here, I put it in the one space. From that point on, every, as soon as there is one on here, then everything that connects to it, uh, those are the only ones that can be populated. And so if I put the one there, the next one must be a two or a six because nowhere else is there a connection to the Nautilian. And in fact, 
there's an A down here on the, uh, on the sub, which means this is an easy board, and you get several of these boards. The Bs are a little bit harder, and then the Cs are crazy hard. I mean, look at this thing. This one, every time you play it in here, then it, it only ever branches by two, so you only ever have a choice of two. Whereas over here, if I play the five first, let's say, that's quite a few connections. So I'm not going to take this one and put it on the ship yet. I don't want it to decide where I'm starting yet. I'm going to put it up here. So that's basically it for me. Uh, leave it on, leave it on. You got it. All right. Back to rolling. Okay, great. I get a reroll, though, because of the A1 over here. Uh, okay, fine. I will take the... Okay, fine. I will give myself the three, the one, the four. So the one here is nothing. The four, one, two, three, four, takes out this six. And I'll put it down there. That's not good because there's two sixes gone. I better be careful with that. And then I move three myself, which is a two. I'll add it to the crew. A two is a little bit better than a one because I can connect to the three, the one, and the five from there, which is a little more flexible. And then I'll pick these up again. A one, a two, and a four is what I got. Um, so if I move one, that's no good. If I move two, that's no good. If I move four, that's... Uh, oh, no, if I move one, that is okay. So I'll take the one. I will give... What? Where are they going towards? One, two, three, four. I'm okay with that. They get that, you get that. So the two over here, nothing. This moves four. It takes an A. I'm okay with them taking an A. I already have it. And then I move one myself, which means I get the three, and the three is connected to the two, so I can add that to my crew. All right. Oh, I'm going on a little ship. I'm going someplace special. The dark house is a scary house. One, two, three. Okay. I cannot give the um i cannot give the phantom a one because they'll take another six and that cannot happen i can't take a six yet myself uh hmm, hmm. take a one I, can't, I don't want him to take the one i want to take uh, this is not good for me at all i might have to spend these well, you know what I could do is I could move two myself and just take that A as a token. I think I'll do that. And then I don't want him to move one, so he'll move three and you get the one. All right? So the one here is nothing. He moves three, one, two, three, and he takes this one. And then I move uh, two. I take an A, which I already have over here, so I'll flip it over and it'll be another one of my reserve counters. And... As you can see, this is pretty pretty quick. Triple ones. Yeah, I can work with triple ones. Great. There we go. Whoa. All right. Uh, you, nothing. You come over here. And I take this as a three, and I also keep it. And then you take a three and destroy it. I'm okay with that because I already have the three. And I'll re-roll this. Uh, one, two, three is the best roll. One, two, three. The four is pretty good for me, so I'll take that. And I need to be tightening this up or I'll forget where these tokens are. There we go. Okay, so the one's pretty good for me. This is a nine. Yeah, all right. He can take a nine. You take a two. So nothing over here on the two. He moves three. He takes a nine away from me. He is definitely zooming. Wait, I'm, I'm giving the, the Phantom higher dice, which is not good, but I'll take a four, and I'm going to put it here. Uh, that's the problem. It's always, you know, they typically zoom by me a little faster than I get to them, so it's just the way that works. So at some point I need to switch that so that I don't, you know, do that anymore. Ooh, ho, ho. Yeah, I'm going to spend one of these and re-roll that. Two, two, two. I don't want him to take that B, but I'm about to get one. I'm okay with that then. 
So 2, 2, 2. 2 over here is nothing. His 2 takes away a B from me. And my 2 gives me a B, which is the one I'm missing. So I have all of these in place now. And I have the one reroll, which I'm completely forgetting to use, actually. Uh, where did he come from? Right there. Yeah, I think. I think that's right. I'm going to just shift these over. Okay. This is, that's the only thing about having this be a spiral, which I did for the video, is that it's, it takes a little more maintenance. There we go. All right. I definitely need more crew. This, is, this ship is looking lonely. Uh, I'm going to reroll this four. There we go. So he is going to move. I'm going to move one. He's going to move one. You get the two. Two is nothing. He moves one and takes an eight. Which I'll put right there. I move one and take a one, which I'll put right there. And that's another crew. Good so far. <laughs> Someone's shouting at me, free reroll! Yes, I know. <laughs> um, that's pretty good. Yes. It's to the seven. Boy. Yeah, all right. I'll do... I'll take... I'll take the one, and they each get a two. Yeah. So the two over here, nothing. He moves two. Oh, no, he goes before me. Never mind. I can't do that. Because he'll take that spot, and then I leap over him. So I cannot give him a two. I want that six. I'm going to get the free reroll. Fine. He gets the three. You get the two. So two is nothing. One, two, three. He gets that seven and eliminates it. I don't know if these are on the screen. Oh, they're not. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. It's just for me. And then uh, one for myself, and I take that six, put it in my crew, and that's it. He is extremely close to the end. Oh, boy. Okay. Time to switch gears here. I need to hurry up. Uh, I cannot take an eight if I land there. I need that five. There are fives later. In fact, they're all later. So what have I skipped that I definitely need? I need that seven. There is a seven later. Eight. Because I might use some of these to move tokens around to do this power, the switchy, switcheroo power. Well, you're going to get the... No, you're going to get the one. You're going to get the three. I'll give myself the three. You get the four. The four over here destroys one of my tokens. Mm, no, wait. Why would I do that? Reroll. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's do that. So nothing. You move three. Get rid of this seven. And then I move... Uh, wait, what did I do? That's wrong. Da -da 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 -da. Um, you were here. There we go. I'm getting the ships confused because they've passed each other now. Um, let's backtrack that real quick. I'm going that away. So yes, I want the three. You get the one. I see. I just, I just did them in reverse order. Okay, fine. So you kill that seven. I get that seven. There we go. Everything is fine now. One, one, and two. A two for me is no good. A one would be fine for me, but I am slowing down. Fine. You get a one, I get a one, you get a nothing. So if this does not go off, I will move. Well, I won't go yet. You go, take a C, which I do not care about. I have all my uh, mages. And then I move one, I take an eight, which goes right here. He is so close. I'm, I'm not going to do this. Right. Well, he has to get a 1. I, can't, I cannot afford to give him anything higher than a 1. So he's going to keep that. I don't need a 2. I mean the 3 and I the 4. Yeah, I could do the 4. So I'll take a 4. I, I guess I could re-roll this and hope it's better. That's equally bad. 
That's fine. I'll give it to that. Okay, I lose that token. Then he moves up, takes a nine, and then I move one, two, three, four, and I take a five. Put it here in the middle. All I need is a nine and to make it to the end, <laughs> which is easier said than done. So there is no nine. Oh, there is a nine right before. But again, with two of these tokens, I could switch a those. All right. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm going to re-roll one die. Actually, one of the one of the threes. Good. That's going to be yours, buddy. And then with these... If I move two... So you get a two, which is nothing. He moves one and eliminates this. And then I move two, and I'm just going to take the token as um, a reserve token over here just for transactions and such. That's that. Roll this. I will definitely be keeping a four. And I am going to... One, two, three, four puts me at the seven. I need to get to the nine. I need to get to the nine. I am going to... I'm going to re-roll one. I'm going to spend two of these. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I'm going to spend two of these. Hmm. Well, here's what I'm thinking. I, I, I want to make this nine be basically four away where the seven is. Just switch them so I get the nine and then I don't care when I get in. As long as I do it in fewer than two goes. The problem is if I don't manipulate these fours, he'll take another one. That means I'm depleted here. And I still need to somehow make one of these fours a one. So um, I could just straight up re-roll. Let's do that. It's not great. Not great. I'm going to spend these two to make one of these a four. Which is the middle power here. And just the rest of it will just have to work out as it does. So a one on him is nothing. This moves one and takes the C. I move four. One, two, three, four. Take that seven, which I'll just flip face down as another token. And then roll again. No. I'm going to re-roll this two and hope for a three. Oh, geez, can I even do this? Okay, sure. Great, great. He gets a one, one, one. So this one, no. You move there. I'm about to lose, and I move three. One, two, three. I get the nine, and then when I re-roll, it does not matter because he moves before I do. So the two here is nothing, but he gets there immediately before I get there with a full crew and a full mages board. That's very close, though. That's uh, really, really tight. So... um that's basically how you play. And again, if you play the uh, vanilla version, the, the completely, you know, uh, try this first version, then you play without the board here and without the lettered token. So the, the track is a little bit smaller. And usually when I'm playing, I don't do the spiral just because, again, it's kind of annoying to, to, to shrink it up a little bit. So um, someone's shouting, Phantom moves first. Yes, yes, it is. So, all right, let's do a little chatting here. Uh, talk about solitaires, talk about this game, talk about whatever you want. Uh, maybe not whatever you want, but uh, let's just let's just talk a little bit. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm equally frustrated as you are. Um, the game comes with uh, several uh, different uh, variations right in the box. As I showed you already, you got the, the different... Um, the different subs for the for the player you also get let's take a look here so we've got this is a two-player game as well if you want it to be though I prefer the solitaire game for pretty much this whole series I prefer the solitaire game rather than the two-player game they work some of them are better than others but there's just no you know it's a little simpler it's a little more uh, condensed what's going on and you can take care of everything if you lose it's your own fault you know 
Uh, all right, so we've got the mages is the expansion one here, which is the one I just played with. Uh, after that, you have the mercenaries, which give you uh, the bad people's board here comes out. This board. And they'll fill this up with little characters that have spears on them. There's little symbols on these, which are kind of hard to tell. And you're going to be recruiting characters that have spears. And when they finally meet somewhere, these two uh, ships, it's two subs, then they have a fight. And you resolve a little something, and then they're on their way. You, you're hoping to beat them. So that's the mercenaries. That's another expansion. You've got the reefs, which is these things. Where are they? Uh, where are the reefs? Here are the reefs. These tokens here. And these go adjacent to these circles. When you land there, you place them every, every third token, I believe. When you land there, you roll a die. You see you get a plus one if you have the matching uh, character already on your board. And then you are trying to uh, roll better than a three, I think including the the you know plus one if, if you get it and if you do get it then you remove the token if you don't get it they give you a little penalty something like that i can't remember exactly how that works but that's how that works nice and simple easy to implement as you can see that one's just this page and then the one i'm going to be playing in just a minute here is the dark house which modifies this card and instead gives you a few cards that this little dude oh i'm the dark house I don't know. I don't know. He'll cycle through them and triggering different powers from round to round. And then finally, the heroic actions down here, which give you some special powers that you can trigger. All right. So that's everything that comes in the box. It is, it is a good amount. All right. So let's uh, go back over here and look at some questions. Have you tried Deep Space D6? I have not played that yet. Which game in the universe is my favorite? Onirim is definitely my favorite. Uh, uh, Suzanne said she likes this better than Onirim. What do you think? I, I like that one better, but this is also very good. And it's different from the other ones considerably. The dice mechanism, the roll and move. I know I, I read a little bit of an article that the designer wrote where he said he wanted to take roll and move and do something interesting with it. And I think he did. This is... Simple. There is some luck, for sure, but you're able to mitigate that, and, and it's interesting. It's very engaging, and as someone said, it's also kind of a relaxing game. You know, it's you roll, move, roll, move. It's got a nice, that cadence sort of lulls you a little bit. All right, have you played Robinson uh, Solo? I have played, yeah. It's just, uh, as the uh, comment directly below you says, it's a little bit fiddly. There's a lot going on, and I prefer this kind of solitaire game to one with a lot going on you know have i seen logan yes i did it's an excellent movie oh this just jumped come back baby come back where did all my comments go oh baby come back where am i am i like just scrolling way past where we were there we go uh mage knight solo no no is Friday any good? Friday is very good, yes. Can you tell me a co-op that's good with two and not pandemic? <laughs> uh, yes, sure. Uh, I don't know. Most co-ops are pretty good with two. Uh, I'm going to say... I'll say the Big Book of Madness. How about that? That's a good one. What else? What? Did you know did you know Suzanne is Geek of the Week? I did. And said you were Key Lime Pie. Are you talking to me right now? What? Key Lime Pie? I don't know. Yes, I am. Just on the weekends. We do an Oniverse overall review and rank all of the games. Amanda Panda? Probably not. Maybe if I play them all solitaire, I could do a recap, but probably, probably not. Uh, I'll just be happy to tell you which ones I like, though. How well does this one rank among them all? Uh, this is probably my second or third. It is Onirim, for sure. And then Castellian and this would be uh, tied at second. You know, second, third. And then Sylveon, which is also very good. There's just a little more table space needed for that one. 
There's a little more going on. There's a whole draft phase at the beginning before you even start playing. So I like it, but it's just a, there's a little more game there, which is great, except when I want to just knock out a few minutes. And then Urbion, which is the one that's not been reprinted, the li it came in a little box. That one's okay. And I suspect that's why it hasn't been reprinted. They might be retweaking it. I don't know. Uh, one Deck Dungeon. I have not played One Deck Dungeon. Did you play Scythe as a solitaire game? You know, it's I want to. I want to try Solitaire Scythe, but I have yet to do that. That's my time. I'm good. Um, Ghost Story Solo. Yeah, yeah. Ghost Story Solo is great, but there is quite a bit going on as well, and you have to manage the three other boards sitting around the table anyway. So I do tend to prefer Ghost Stories. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, with four, I like to I like to play Ghost Stories with a full complement because everyone can take care of their own boards. All right. Um, was there a pandemic for you before pandemic? Like, did I used to be sick before I played? Is that what you mean? Uh, was there a pandemic before pandemic? I guess my game before pandemic, maybe uh, San Juan. Maybe Blue Moon. I forget if I played that first. I mean, these are not co-op, though, you know, so no, uh, I played a lot of San Juan, and I played a lot of Blue Moon. I played a ton of Blue Moon. So maybe that's the one. <laughs> Have you tried Role Player Solo? No, I didn't know you could play that Solitaire. I love the game. I just didn't know you could play Solitaire. I could see myself trying that. That sounds good. Uh, someone's asking me to rank the games in this series. Well, I, I just did that, I think. Yes, yes. Uh... <laughs> Do I have a preference for solo games, card-based, board-based, dice-based? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I don't... I like all those things. I like board games, solitaire games, cards, dice. I like it all. I'm a little weary sometimes of the dice game solitaires because they tend to be very swingy or even just co-ops. Like, I remember the uh, the one that Fiduti put out with the, the gnomes or I think that's what it was. Red November? Yeah. And the dice rolling in that game was so swingy that it shot the fun a little bit for me. It wasn't quite as fun as some of the other co-ops or solitaire games I've played. So I like card games a lot. But, but dice and, and board and all of that is cool too. And one thing I enjoy a lot is I, I, I like the games that are... Sometimes a game has scoring, and sometimes it has a win-lose. I tend to enjoy a you-win-or-you-don't-win type scenario, whereas there's a lot of co-ops that you lose anyway. At some point, you or, or solitaire. You will lose. You just score what you did, and you try to best your own score next time. I don't like that as much. you got to write yourself a little note, stick it in the box, remember you know how well you did last time. I want to win or I want to lose. And I want it to be close, obviously, so that there's tension there. But I don't tend to like that style of game design, you know, for solitaires especially. All right. Can you play Sylveon? Yes, I can. <laughs> I, I I might play another solitaire game, yeah. It, it seems like these are being well-received, so let's see. All right. The three new Elder Sun expansions, are they good solitaire? They are. I enjoyed those very much. The, the route they're taking that game, I'm really happy with. Uh, what is the hardest solo game you've played? Probably, this is a, this is solitaire or a co-op, but um, the one with the Norse mythology theme that, jeez, oh, what was that called? It had, you know, the, it had Thor with his hammer on the cover and the big serpent. Oh, jeez, I don't remember what it's called. Someone will know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> okay. Ghost Stories is very difficult. Someone's saying, yeah, Ghost Stories is the hardest. This game was harder. I cannot, for the life of me, remember what it's called now. Um, but that one's crazy tough. It gets easier with more players, I think. So Solitaire is murder. You know, forget it. Yggdrasil, that's the one. Thank you. 
Thank you, Gregory. That's exactly it. Um, all right, everybody. So if you don't have any more questions, let me check my phone here real quick. See what's going on. All right, cool. Everything's good. Let's uh, do this again. I'm excited to dig back in. So I am going to, you know what? I'm going to play without this board for now. I'm going to pull these out. The A's and the B's and the C's. That one's out as well. I'll give myself my little uh, stock of four tokens here. If you have any other questions or anything, you can let me know. Here, you know, tweet at me or whatever. And definitely, if you want to get in touch with me uh, about board games and such, you want to ask me stuff, you want to just check out what I'm up to, follow me on Twitter because um, it's definitely my board game outlet. I don't. I use Facebook sparingly anyway and not really for board game stuff. So if you have ever followed me on Facebook and I don't follow you back or, or click the friend button or whatever, uh, it's nothing personal. I just don't use it for board gaming stuff. Uh, Twitter, though, definitely follow me on there and you can see what's, what's going on. All right, so these are all in. These are all out. I'm going to shuffle these up here and we are going to play without... Oh, get in there. I'm going to play without this board, but with these cards. So I've already pre-selected here. Depending on the difficulty, you add a certain number of blue cards and a certain number of red cards. So I'll put these all aside for now. I am going to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So let me go over here. You can be placed aside for now, buddy. And then these are going to be shuffled, and I'm going to place them here, I think, unless you can't see that. Uh, let me take a look at this footage. Yeah, okay, you can see that. In fact, I'll push them down a little bit, and then this guy's going to go right there. All right, so this one can go away now. Since these will take the place of that one, this is still my special power card. Got my dice, and then I just need to arrange these, and I'll try a different thing this time, I guess. All right, let's just do, I'm going to put my little happy aisle right there, and I'll just do that. Oh, what a beautiful path. There we go. Turn it around. You can do this obviously however you want to. Still on? Yeah. Yeah, that work. So there's fewer of these tokens now because I pulled out the, uh, the mages. But that's all right. And then I'll put this over here. This is their ship. This is my ship. Turn these over. <clears throat> so I'm curious if everybody's been playing the uh, Onerim, Onirim, whatever app. What you've been thinking about that? If you've enjoyed it. If you have any other recommendations for excellent board gaming uh, solitaire apps that you really enjoy, I'd love to hear it in the comments. You know, let me know what you. Um, what some of your favorite ones are. Maybe some I could even check out. I've definitely been playing it a lot myself. It's great being able to knock out a quick game of that, you know, and it's it's well implemented. It's really fun. Uh, the shuffling certainly in that game is, I would say, excessive. But it's necessary for that game, and the app alleviates all of that entirely. That's yeah, pretty good. All right, so... Um, Uh, is Hunter in here? Oh, no. Oh, no. Shutting everything down. <laughs> Hello. The way this is going to work is the exact same thing you just saw, except at the beginning, you know, before phase one, which is rolling the dice here, there's a phase zero in which this guy moves to the next card, and that card affects that round, except at the beginning he just starts off, and he'll move on to the first one. So let's take a look at what these do here. The two blue are supposed to be good. Uh, the other ones, not so much. So first card here says, recover a token from the discard and place it in the reserve. If I roll a three or a four, 
I still have to get rid of one. So this one over here says I choose one figure, roll a die, and give it to that figure, and then I roll the other two dice. So that one forces me to pick one of the three locations and roll one die, give it to that, and then the other two. This one says if I, uh, I only lose a token on a four at the dark house. This one says that if I give the dark house a two, I re-roll it, and if it's a three or a four, then I lose a token. So I have the possibility to lose a token on a two as well. And then this last one says I recover a token from the discard, and I add it to the path between the Nautilian and the Abyss, making my trip longer, but also possibly allowing me to put a token back into play that I've skipped over all of those. So there is that, all right? Um, anything else? Let's check before I keep on doing my thing. Hmm. Okay. You know, there's someone in here, oh, Kabuki Kid, talking about the app version of the game, which I like. And the app is certainly interesting. I like that the app is adds a few different things, but I gotta say, I've I just played a new game coming out soon from uh, AEG, I believe, called Okie Doki, which I think, and I'm going to be doing a review of it very soon, but I'll give you a little, a little spoiler here. I think, for me, takes the game and, and blows it away. The, the, Okie Doki is the game that the game wants to be when it grows up. It's still simple. It's still really straightforward, but... Wow, is it more interesting and, and still puzzly, still very simple card play, arranging things, but I I think I I think this one's gonna get rid of the game in my collection for sure. So alright, let's do this. I'm ready. Let me put this in here a little bit more. There we go. Alright, so the first thing is recover a token from the discard pile, place it in my reserve, which I can't do. Roll my dice. All right, you're gonna get a two, buddy. I'm gonna get a one, you get a one. The two over here is nothing. You move up one and take out a six. And I move up one and I'll take a four, which I will place right there. That's it, this moves. And this one is, uh, I choose one die and roll it. And I gotta pick a thing first. So I'm going to give this one to myself, right here. Okay. And then the other two, I got a one and a two. He gets the one, you get the two. Two is nothing over there. You move one and take this three. And then I move two and take a seven, which cannot be placed. So I have to take it as a reserve token. This moves again. And now if I roll, it, it only makes me lose a token on a four. So a three is safe to give to the dark house. Not that I needed it. <clears throat> um, hmm, hmm. If I move two, I get a six, which is also unusable. I'm going to give up one of these and re-roll. Oh, jeez. Okay. I was trying to speed up a little bit. That's fine. You got a one. You got a one. I got a two. So the one over here is nothing. You take that. <clears throat> and then I move two, which is a six. I also could not add the six to my board. Again, I need adjacency. So I take it as a reserve token. And this moves again. And now, if I give it a two, I re-roll it. And if it's a three or a four, then I, I it's like I gave him a three or a four. Hmm. I'm re-rolling all of that. That's all bad. All right. So you'll get the one, so I don't have to deal with that. And a two. Boy, this is bad. Yeah, it is. And that. So the one's okay. He moves two and takes a seven. And I move two and take a four, which I already have, which I take. I'm not getting much crew here. Nothing I can do about that. All right. Uh, one, three, four. Oh, I forgot to move you. 
And you say you recover a token from the discard pile, add it to the path between the Notillion and the Abyss. All right. Now, does he always do that, or just when I give him a, a matching thing? I don't remember that part. The Narc House. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm just reading two players. Da -da -da, ba -da. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, yeah, I just deal with all of it. Okay, so yes, it will happen. I have to do it. So recover a token from the discard, which are these as well. And I add it to the path in front of me. Okay. And I assume I cannot roll the dice before I do that, probably. Because that's a little bit of a bonus. Yeah, because this has to be phase zero before I roll. So I'll just not worry about the roll for right now. And I'm going to put a... Um, <laughs> I'll add a six up here somewhere. I really don't care. I'll do that. So I rolled a one, a three, and a four. Uh, he's, uh, take the four, four, one, two. This is all bad. I need to get something other than a four or something I can't get to. One, two, three. There's got to be something better. One, two, three. Horrible. All horrible. All right. I am going to give him a one. I'm going to give me a three. He gets a two. And I'm going to spend two of these tokens to switch two tokens on the track. Because I'm, I'm dying out here. So I'm going to be moving three ahead. And I would like to take a five. So I'm going to switch. This is dumb, but I'll just switch these two. So the two over here is nothing. He moves one. And I move three and take a five. Now, with the five in play in the submarine, I have a lot more options here of what I can place. I now have access to everything except the one and the seven out here. So just to help me out a little bit. Because it's rough out here for a submarine. Three ones. Snake eyes if the snake has three eyeballs. Okay. Okay. I don't want the four again. That's for sure. Oh, I forgot to move him. All right. There we go. I hope I haven't forgotten that more than once. I don't think I did. So discover a, recover a token from the discard, place it in the reserve. Okay, cool. Uh, the reserve is my own reserve, right? This, pretty sure that's what that is. Just making sure. Yes. All right, well, I'll take one of these and give it to myself. There we go. And then three ones are no bueno, so I'm going to spend one and re-roll. You're right there. That's uh, a little bit better. Oh, man. Sure. I'll take a two, two, a one, one. The one over here is nothing. He moves one and takes this three. And I move two and take a one, which I cannot place, so I'll take it over here. All right. I'm going to bump this up. Bump this all up a little bit. There we go. He moves. I choose one die and a figure, and I roll it. I'm going to pick him. Perfect. And then I roll the other two. A one and a two. Uh, I'm okay with that. I'll give the one to him. I get the two. One over here is nothing. He moves to there and takes a six out. I move twice, and I get the eight, which can be placed. All right, things are happening now. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay, you move to there. I only bust on a four. <clears throat> okay, then I'll give you a three. There we go. The three doesn't do anything. He moves one and takes another six. Can I afford to do that? Yeah, there's one up here. Because he's taken a bunch of sixes by now. There are three sixes discarded by now. 
Um, and then I move four myself. One, two, three, four. I take six right now, actually. Never mind. All right, cool. Bump this up. He moves. And this one is the one that says if I give him a two, I might give him a three or a four. Yeah, okay. I can work with that. And I'll give myself a four. He gets a two. So the one over here is safe. He moves twice and takes a one, which I'll put right here. Uh, he goes there. And then I move four, one, two, three, four, and I take a one, and I put the one in play. There we go. I still need four numbers. I'm going to have to do some manipulation because they're not, not all ahead of me at this point. In fact, oh, this is bad. None of them are ahead of me at this point. I went too fast. <laughs> I can't win. Uh, this moves. Recover a token and add it in front of me. Oh, okay, sure. I can do that. I'll take a three. And I'll put it right in front of me. I just hope to roll a one. Which it did. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'll give him a four, a two, one. The two over here is nothing. He moves four and takes a one. Don't care, I already have it. And then I move one and take a three and place it. There we go. This moves to here. I recover one. What's this one? And add it to my reserve. And then I roll. Two, two, one. I can work with that. Two, two, one. I need a two, a nine, and a seven. I am going to switch, I'm going to pay two of these, and I'm going to switch the uh, this eight with this two. There we go. He gets a two, you get a two, I get a one. Two over here is nothing. He moves one two times. That's a nine. Yeah, that's okay. And then I move ones, and I take a two. Place it on the board. He moves. And I roll a single die. My single die is going to go to the, um, the phantom. Jeez. Okay. And then I'm not, I don't want to waste these on a re-roll. I'm going to need those. All right. Okay. He gets a two. And I will spend these two to make a switch. Um, oh, wait a second. I got nines in front of me. Oh, jeez. Okay, okay, that's, that's fine. I'll move two. And he needs to move four first. One, two, three, four, right? Haven't done that yet. <clears throat> and I went to the five. I just take that. And then we move over here. He only busts me on a four. I need a one, and then I need another one. Right. So I'll spend this to re-roll. All of them. I needed a one! Is there anything I can do at this point? Oh, jeez. I'm out of tokens. Can't do it. I cannot do it. I just lost again. Nothing. Three. And then I get home and I'm not done. I'm missing the nine and the seven, which again, I was very close. There are two nines here. And if I had two tokens, I could have swapped this four out here with a seven. There's two of them out here in front. Taken that, won it. But that's that. Another loss. That's two for two. When I did this with Oniron, by the way, there was some winnage. Uh, not so much with this game. And it is tough. This game is certainly very tough. Um, someone's saying I didn't switch the numbers. Uh, 
I don't know what numbers. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't land on them anyway. Uh, I think that's right. If I made a mistake, then you know, whatever. I was very close. I wasn't gonna win anyway. There was no way. I, I definitely rushed ahead quickly enough because I didn't want to lose the way I lost the first time. But it was too quick, maybe. And then these, of course, add some variability to the game. And there's a few other ones. So it, it will always be uh, a different combination. And the order they come out in also will give you a different combination. So there's a nice amount of stuff going on here. As you can see, there are different you know, different combos you can make. I could have played with the with the mages and the dark house cards. You know, I could have combined those two things. So that's always possible. You have failed me for the last time, someone says. Sorry, Tobin. <laughs> um, all right, everybody. So that's basically it. I have a couple of minutes here. We can do, a, a, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, let me know while I have you here. What you'd like me to do next is a solitaire play, just to give you an idea of how the game works, teach you, play it a couple of times, and we can chat about it. What's what's on your radar? What would you like to see uh, me tackle here next? The Grizzled... I don't know, does that work solo? I don't think so. No, I think you need at least two players for that. Oh, no, no. There's a... The, the At Your Orders expansion lets you play solitaire. I would need to tackle that one. I, I'm, I think I only did it one time. I don't remember very well. I know I like that expansion a lot, but I usually play that in a group because I, I don't know, that's a great co-op game with more than one player. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> Friday. People are saying Friday. Okay, maybe. Run, fight, or die. No longer have that game. I won't be doing that. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, with the expansion to play solitaire. Good to see you, by the way, Steve. I love your. Uh, I love that you're always popping in and commenting on my videos and such over on BGG. You are the man. I appreciate that. <clears throat> All right. Maybe I'll take a look at role player though. That's a little bit bigger than what I'm attempting to do here. I want to. I want to showcase these smaller games. You know, something you can, in between. You know, I don't know, you just took a shower, you're waiting for dinner, or you just got home and, you know, or it's late at night, you're ready to go to bed, you want to do something to decompress a little bit. Something short, something quick, you know. It's sort of one I want to tackle. I think role player might have a little too much setup for that. Um, some of these other games that are cooperative and you can play solitaire probably have too much setup for that. I have played Space Hulk Death Angel before, though I'd no longer own it. I thought it was okay. <clears throat> uh, Castellion could very well be a possibility. That is my next favorite, I think. Again, this one and Castellion kind of go back and forth. So I might play that one next. That one, to me, feels like Oniram. Which is why I like it as much as I do. Because it's sort of like that game with a spatial element. You know, if you have to lay out the cards in a specific pattern... That's how that one feels to me. The powers feel similar. It's got a great vibe. So maybe I'll do that one. And it has a pretty small footprint as well. So that one could be really fun. Um, Fuse Solitaire. Pff, I can't deal with that. And my, my brain would explode. No way. <laughs> all right, everybody. I'm going to wrap it up then. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you had fun. I hope you uh, figured out how to play the game. I'm pretty sure by now you know how to play. And I, uh, you know, I just want to thank you again for tuning in and hanging out with me a little bit. I'm going to let you go. We'll chat again soon. I'll see you on the Twitter. And I'm going to shut this down right now. Natalian, you've disappointed me again. You hurt me on the inside where my feelings live.